Yep, we're with the Winkle, and today we're making Can a I volcano. volcano. <sighs> Grant, have you ever seen a volcano erupt in real life? No. <laughs> Do you know that there's a lot of volcanoes actually where we are? They're just not active? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Yes. Are you excited about making a volcano today? Totally. Okay, let's see what's in our kit. Volcano design, a Kool-Aid packet, a pipette, one bottle, some baking soda, and a plate. Awesome, on top of everything in our kit, you will need a pencil, pencil and some scissors. And if you want to color your volcano, you can maybe use some markers or crayons or anything like that. Once you have all that, we're ready to get started. Let's do it. Okay, Grant, first we're gonna start with our paper and our pencil. So a volcano is a landform, like a mountain, where molten rock erupts, okay? So we're gonna draw first our main vent is what this is called, and this is the magma down here. And it's okay if it gets jagged because usually volcanoes are jagged. Yeah, we're talking about the earth, and like the earth is never perfectly symmetrical or lines aren't perfectly straight. We're gonna label this down here, the magma. Do you know what the magma is? Uh, yes, it is the rock that's melted. That's right. All this right here is just like rock. You could even do like dots, so we know that that's rock. So this is called the main vent. So you can label that main vent. Um, it's also can be called the conduit. So I'll do a slash conduit. And then right here, can I do a jaggedy thing? And that's called the throat. Where's our throat on our body? On our yeah. neck. Yeah, and so when I think of this, I think of like somebody that's throwing up, right? Yeah. So like the volcano has the magma and that's kind of like our stomach if we have a tummy ache. And then it comes up through the main vent and then out through the throat. You're gonna have a crater right here. And that's where the, the magma will come through. So in simple terms, a volcano is a mountain that opens downward to a pool of molten rock, magma, below the surface of the earth. It is a hole in the earth from which molten rock and gas erupt. So when this molten rock is underneath the earth's surface, it's called magma. magma. And then when it comes out of the earth's surface, it's, it's lava. Falling. That's right, it's called lava. And then all of this under here, there's all this other space. We're just gonna draw these like arch lines. This is all layers, layers of ash and lava. Okay, so those layers of ash and lava are kind of be like rainbow shaped. So Grant, the hotter and thinner the lava is, the farther it'll run. Yeah. If you think like cold butter, it kind of like stands still or maybe it might start drooping a little bit, but if yeah. you ever had like super hot butter and it like it's runs right off your plate. super fast. That's right. So do you know how hot the lava can get? 4,000 degrees. Oh, that's close. It can actually get up to a little around 2,000 degrees. So that lava eventually like comes over the Earth's surface and cools down, right? Yeah. And then it turns into lava rock. And those those rocks from the lava can turn into different kinds of rocks. Um, like obsidian. Or granite. Yeah. So a volcano can be active, dormant, or extinct. Okay, a lot of the volcanoes we have here in Arizona are dormant. Dormant, meaning they haven't erupted for several hundreds of years. Yes, and let's hope they continue to be dormant while we're living here. And then an extinct volcano is one that scientists don't think will ever erupt again. Good, now we have our little drawing of our volcano. And now if you want to, now's a good time to color in any of these details. I forgot to add on a lot of volcanoes, we have a, what's called a secondary vent. So this is like a secondary area. It's not as big as the main vent. Secondary vent, not as big, not as strong, but air and lava does come out through the secondary vent as well. Okay, so I'm gonna color that one so we remember that also has some lava coming out of it too. Just a little bit. Though. Just a little trickle. I still wouldn't wanna be near it. <laughs> 
Yeah, you don't want to go walking on a volcano and then you fall through that vent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so true. That would be... You'd die. Yeah. That would be scary. Okay, and then this rock layer, I'm just going to do some brown right here. Just to make it look more like rock down here. Mine is black streaks. Oh, that's cool. I like that. All right, we can set our paper aside and we're gonna get out our bottle, our Kool-Aid, baking soda, and our plate. Grant, last time you were on a video with me, we used the same kind of bottle. For and, a rocket. Yeah, we made a rocket car that we had a chemical reaction in here and it blasted <sighs> off and it had wheels on it. Super fun. This time we're doing another chemical reaction with baking soda. Uh-huh. Okay. And Kool-Aid Kool and water and water. That's right. Put the bottle in the middle of your plate Just so we can catch any spills that we might have open up your baggie and we're just gonna try and pour it out Very slowly so that all the baking soda goes in the bottle Very good So baking soda acts as a base and this Kool-Aid is actually our citric acid so a lot of people think we need vinegar for this experiment. What we really are looking for is citric acid. And that, look at that. Citric the number acid. one ingredient in Kool-Aid is citric acid. So um, if you're having a hard time getting your Kool-Aid packet open, I just tore the corner off and I stick my pipette in there and that opens up the Kool-Aid packet a little more. Before you start pouring it in, you wanna make sure it's nice and open in there. Okay, and slowly pour that in. It smells so good. It does smell good. I'm tempted to try it, but it is always a good idea to get used to not putting your science experiments in your mouth because a lot of the experiments that we have are not good for you, for eating. Don't eat it. <laughs> That's just disgusting. Just give that a little stir with your pipette. The citric acid in the Kool-Aid powder reacts with the baking soda that's a base when you add the water. They do not react with water individually, but they react with each other when dissolved in water. You could even put your lid on and give it a good shake. When the baking soda and the Kool-Aid react with each other, they form sodium citrate and carbon dioxide. Do you know what carbon dioxide is? It's a gas. That's right. Carbon dioxide is a gas. And what does gas do? It um, bubbles. Yeah, that's right. When you're gassy and you feel like, yeah, <laughs> you have like gas bubbles inside of you and it's, you gotta release that gas somehow. So that's what's gonna happen in our bottle because it's gonna be so full of gas that our bottle can't contain all of it. And it's gonna come up and bubble over. And, and it'll then look it'll like release. lava. Exactly, look like lava. Are gonna okay, it? now we're gonna put this volcano around our bottle. See, I have my piece of tape ready, all ready to go. Look how the throat of my volcano is right around that bottle. If you don't have it tight around there, then your eruption is gonna fall like into your paper and it won't overflow over the top of your paper. So you've gotta really put a tight wrap around the throat of your bottle. And tape that together. That's good. Oh yeah, that's great. It's gonna be perfect, actually. Now time for the eruption. Okay, now for the chemical reaction part. You are going to need a cup of water for this, so go get a cup of water, pause the video, get a cup of water, and then come right back. Okay, we have our water. We're gonna squeeze our pipette, put it in the water, and then, and then unsqueeze the pipette, and that will put water in the pipette. Now my water's red because I use my pipette to mix up my Kool-Aid and baking soda. So there's enough in here that we can get a couple of reactions out of the volcano. So we're going to put in all our water and you can hear it starting to fizz. Put in a little more water. Keep putting in some water. Oh, do you see the reaction happening in there? That's so exciting. I see it bubbling. Oh, look, it's oh, awesome. Oh, Right here. Wow. Oh, this is actually really cool. That's so cool. Oh. Oh. And then you can keep adding water and get a few more bubbles. Come on, more bubbles. Until all the chemistry is spent inside of there. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's so awesome. Whoa. Let's add some more water to yours. Whoa. Yay. Look at that. 
Whoa. That is amazing. I have a lot. More... Okay, not too much. We don't want to overflow our plate. Awesome. Wow. This was such a fun project. Yes, I love it learning was. about volcanoes and I love learning about chemistry. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. If you guys like this project, please press like and subscribe. That way, every time we come out with new Winkle videos, you'll be the first to know. Also, check out down below for freebies and thewinkle.com. See you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. That was actually really cool. Yeah, that was super cool.